Hey, how you going? My name is Lockie Quazzoli. I'm here to talk to you today about mental health. Just a little bit about me. I'm 20 years old. I attended De La Salle Cronulla two years ago, so I was part of the 2018 class. I'm studying primary teaching at Notre Dame University. I started a mental health project called Path to Peace, which is geared towards empowering people with any mental health illnesses and, and, and teaching them how to overcome them. I'm very privileged to have the upbringing that I've had and I've had a great support network of friends and family around me who have who have helped me immensely. I'll give you a bit of a spill of my general struggles and how you know I came to be I guess. For me I started with anxiety you know I've always had that from a very young age and eventually that led into a depression you know the past couple of years and that led to some suicidal urges especially last year. You know anxiety being there from you know day one and I didn't really know why it was there I've only started to realize recently why it's been so prominent in my life. Anxiety is the fear of the unknown, which explains why everyone, no matter what age or your experience, everyone can experience anxiety, everyone goes through anxiety. That's the thing, because we never truly know what life has in store for us. The depression developed in the past couple of years, and that was from both external and internal issues that I had, and they just kind of, you know, spun out of control. Last year was a particularly tough year. I began to develop suicidal urges, and it was, it was a constant battle to keep myself from self-harm. A couple of notable events that have led to my mental health struggle, uh, you know, my dream initially as a young kid was to play in the AFL, and you know, eventually I couldn't really, you know, pursue that dream any further, and it was hard to move on to something else when that was, you know, all that I knew. A family friend of mine committed suicide in 2019, and I feel like I'm still, you know, going through that and still, you know, grieving from that as you are, you know, it doesn't just take a couple of months to grieve, it can take years and years to grieve and, you know, I've, I've started to accept that in the past couple of months. I know he, he never, I know he was struggling to find some sort of peace, but he deserves so much better, he deserves so much better. I had a fairly traumatic car crash in 2018, it put me in, you know, in bad debt and it made me, you know, just very anxious to to get out there and start driving again and you know all these different issues circling around that. You know, I had multiple failed relationships throughout the years you know a couple ones which were like for three weeks and then cut one for like a year it just happens how it happens. And additionally I had some social friend group issues and you know it's, it's, it's not great to go through when you've got HSC and you've got uni coming up and then there's so many things that are pressuring you. I feel like many of you can kind of relate to that and especially you'd be going through that at the moment and I'm here to tell you that it's going to be okay. You know a big thing I've learned on my own journey is to understand that we need to forget about labels, you know you are human and you aren't perfect and you never really will be. So the thing for this first video will revolve around patterns and behaviours that can help make and break us on our life journey. I've learned that the behavioural patterns that we run on a daily basis are you know the most important thing for our mental health well-being. You know, these patterns are really so powerful and understanding how to use them to break the cycle of anxiety, depression, addiction, eating disorders and all other mental health illnesses, you know, patterns are really the key. You know, as I said before, anxiety is a fear of the unknown and generally some patterns of anxiety are overthinking things until you get to the point where you're thinking more than you're actually doing. If you're always stuck in a zone which is just your comfort zone, you're never reaching to that growth zone point, you know, you're always going to be stuck in that same place forever. You know, the general patterns of depression are poor sleep and not getting enough exercise, not eating well, not hydrating enough, not controlling your breathing, um, you know, working long hours or not at all. There are so many that you'll start to realize once you start to peel back the layers of the depression that it's all about the patterns that you were running. And there's definitely depression that you can't exactly control. Depression is really about learning what you can and can't control and learning to be okay with that. You know, healthy patterns take time to master. They take, they take time to get consistent with. So don't beat yourself up by not adhering to them all consistently because remember, you aren't perfect and you're just gonna keep growing every day. For me, it's as simple as working through one at a time and if I can get through one and fulfill that in one day, then I'm happy. Number one is breathing techniques. I feel like when you're in a stressful or anxious situation, you're not controlling your breathing right, you're doing rapid, very short breathing. There are three really great breathing techniques I wanna tell you about. The first is a four, four, six breathing technique. Very simple, you inhale for four, you hold for four, and then you exhale for six seconds. Progressive muscle relaxation is really simple as well. You kind of lay on your back on a flat surface, 
and you tense the different parts of your body. So you start at the feet, working all the way up to the skull. You tense them and you hold them for like five seconds and then you let them go as you continue to breathe. The diaphragmatic breathing technique is really great as well. It's learning to get oxygen into your diaphragm and simply doing that is just pushing out your stomach. Because when you inhale and you push your stomach out, the oxygen is going to get down into your diaphragm and reach all areas of the lung, which is really great for stress relief. Next up is sleeping habits. A really great tip for you guys is to prepare for bedtime two hours before. Try to aim for a bedtime around eight to 10 and that can be depending on your schedule. I understand it's different for everyone. And this is very critical. Make sure you're logging off two hours before you go to bed. So set your alarm, text anyone you need to text. In order to calm yourself and get yourself into the most optimum sleeping state, you can try reading a book or a magazine or a newspaper article. You can get gentle music going at a low volume. You can have a cup of herbal tea and you can work through those breathing exercises as well and even have a hot bath if you feel like it. Next up is exercise. Exercise really isn't that complicated. It's as simple as getting up in the morning and going for a walk. For me, I go for a walk every single morning and it's one of the best things for me mentally. On these walks, you can chuck in some headphones or take a dog with you or take a friend with you or go by yourself. Main thing about these walks is that they're a really fulfilling way to start the day. Exercise not only keeps you healthy, but it trains the muscle, which is your mind and allows you to get better quality of sleep. Next up is diet and hydration. Uh, a pretty simple way to get your hydration up is to carry a bottle or a flask with you throughout the day and constantly refill it and just sip it at times as well. Breakfast is absolutely crucial and I, I look to incorporate eggs, oats, fruits or even some sort of smoothie into my breakfast every day. For example, you can have eggs on toast with some avocado or some butter, have two glasses of water and maybe like a banana or an apple on the side for some fruit. I found once I've started eating better and especially having a great breakfast, you know, it sets me up for a great day full of, you know, productivity and full of fun. And just another thing, I really want to challenge you guys to only eat out maybe once or twice a week. Now, understanding how to treat yourself like the bloody king or queen that you are is absolutely life-changing. Self-care allows you to be the best person you can be. Just because you've been diagnosed with some sort of mental health illness, it doesn't define you, it doesn't define who you are, and it doesn't define who you will continue to be. Thank you so much for watching, even though you were forced to, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope you have a great week.